have Saba with us. He will talk about another OWASP project. We're really happy to have um, the application security verification, verification standard. Um, and from the project, you can see like volunteering projects move on. It's got started in 2008, published in 2009, and then somehow kind of stuck. Um, yeah, and there was an announcement. Who wants to join in? Who wants to make? Uh, who wants to be project lead? And some people wanted to volunteer, and here's one of the elected ones. Uh, thanks for your work. We're happy you're here. Yeah, please thanks. give him a warm welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for having me, and thanks for opening the windows, by the way. That was really hot. Um, I'm Saba Kazerni. I'm the managing director of Security Compass. We're a software security firm. And um, I assumed leadership of ASVS in 2011, in late 2011, with a co-lead, actually. So I'm a co-lead on the project with Daniel Cuthbert, who um, couldn't be here today. Um, just a really quick show of hands. Who is familiar with ASVS in this room? OK, wow, better than I expected. And who has never heard of it? OK. Who doesn't want to put their hand up? OK, small, small number there. So I'm, I'm actually happy that you guys are um, familiar with the project, at least. So ASVS is a flagship OWASP project. It's the first and only standard that was published by OWASP. And um, even to this day, um, it's the only standard. Top 10, um, as uh, uh, Dave mentioned earlier, isn't really a standard, but um, similar in some ways. So just to give you a little bit of background on what ASVS is and what its main goal is. So the main idea of ASVS is to create this standardization on the way that we test and certify our applications for security. Um, so a typical use case is that if you have, let's say you have 1,000 applications, and I think that's common in some large organizations, and you have this mandate to conduct application security. Um, what do you do? Do you uh, thoroughly scan every application end to end? Um, anyone have any thoughts on how you approach a problem like this? What's your starting point? Can't do them all. So, so what do you do? What's, a, what's the entry point? You triage them for risk, perhaps, and then based on that, you determine, well, applications that are risk level X maybe get a certain type of assessment. Applications that are higher risk get a more thorough assessment. ASVS defines what that level of assessment is for different types of applications. And it's meant to be used as an industry standard. Um, you can adopt it within your organization or if you are um, a service or tools provider, you can actually provide assessments that map to ASVS as well. So um, this is a really bad diagram because the font is way too small, but I will distribute the presentation. What, what we're showing here is that you have tools and service providers that align their methodology to ASVS. Um, so for example, our company, you know, we do penetration testing. What we would do is we would certify our clients' applications for ASVS level one, two, or three. And by, um, by mapping our methodology, our clients can be sure that you have, you know, I achieved ASVS certification by um, using the service. Um, similarly, tools, so if you think of uh, automated scanners, if you, um, for example, if you knew that Fortify, again, just an example of a vendor, if you knew that Fortify can give you level one certification, you could actually run the tool and be done with it. Um, whereas other levels might require manual assessments. Um, what you see on the bottom part here, so this is now the other side of the coin, this is our organization. So we have our procurement team, which can also articulate the requirements for purchasing a service or a tool, saying that I need a vendor that can give me ASVS level two certification, and you know exactly what that is. And then you have the development team, so this is um, a sample SDLC, but you can see that ASVS actually affects different sections of the SDLC. It's a verification standard, so by default you think of testing. You can verify certain checks. 
But what you can also do is you can turn those same verification um, items into requirements for developers to build off of. So if you know that a certain application is going through level two certification, why not give them the requirements up front so that you have zero findings when you actually verify? Um, so ASVS is a very important standard in that it can actually bring in um, many phases of the software development lifecycle. Um, the other things you see here are um, design. So um, some of the levels, for example, level three has some design specific requirements, where some of the others may not. So just, that's just an overall um, view of why SVS is required um, in the industry. Um, we just actually um, yesterday published what we call the beta version of ASVS 2013. The last published was in 2009. And um, when we assumed leadership, there was quite a bit that, um, you know, there was a lot of feedback from the industry on why ASVS wasn't being adopted. So a lot of you have heard of it. Does anybody use it within the organization? Yep, a um, couple of hands here. So that's, that's a um, pretty accurate representation of what I've heard as well. So our number one goal was to increase adoption. So first thing we did was we asked, we, we published a survey asking what, is, wh what are some of the challenges today with ASVS? And um, some of the common feedback that we got, one of the most, um, I, I guess the most common criticism of the ASVS standard was that level one was being called an automated verification. And you know, the, the security testers in us, so the guys that do the consulting, just didn't like that, right? Because we know it depends what tool you use, right? You can't say just run a scanner against your app. That's not standardized because different scanners test for different things. So that was one of the biggest challenges is this differentiation between automated and manual. Um, it focused too much on the how versus the what. So a standard should tell you these are the things you need to comply with and you know, everything else is up to you how you achieve that. Um, so those are some of the major changes that we made within ASVS. And just to give you a glance of what it looks like now, again, the text might be a little um, uh, kind of oddly colored here, but what we did was the previous ASVS had four levels as well, so it's similar in some ways, but you'll notice this, what we call the cursory level that we introduced. Um, what, the, what the cursory level is, is it's a point of entry which is optional. So this was really introduced to help with that automated manual kind of uh, difference. So as, as an organization, let's say you feel that an automated scan using your tool of choice is your point of entry into your certification lifecycle. We're not going to define as ASVS what that is, but we're giving you an option to enter using your own terms. Gives a little bit more flexibility um, to, the, to the standard, whereas everything else in ASVS is very clearly defined. So one, two, and three are certifications or levels that are clearly defined. The requirements are defined by the standard. Um, any initial thoughts on this? You guys like this idea of uh, kind of the flexibility, openness? Yeah, I know. That, so th that's one thing we did consider, but um, the, the standard really, what, what it says about that level is that you have done some type of assessment, and I think that's what gives the flexibility that was required. So really, our goal was to increase adoption, and we felt you can't do that with um, be, being very, very stringent, you almost have to um, cater to both sides. So as security people, we want to be very um, detailed and make sure everything is thorough. From a business perspective, there is constraints in place. So we just wanted to make sure that we cater to both sides and we meet in the middle. This was really one of the ways that within the group, so um, just so you know, our, my colleague also was um, involved in the developer guide. Um, one of the other major contributors was involved in the testing, um, testing guide as well, as well as the original version of ASVS. So um, 
with, with their input as well as a lot of the input that we got from industry and um, the survey that we put out. Um, this is kind of what's there. Um, again, this is currently called beta, so until October, um, we're kind of leaving it open for, for feedback. Um, there's still an opportunity to make changes to the standard because we recognize it's a flagship project. It is a standard, so there should be consensus. So definitely provide your feedback. So what do these levels mean? Level cursory, um, I kind of described that. Some type of verification, I won't get into it too much. Level one, these are ones now that are defined by the standard. So level one, we are defining as those vulnerabilities that are opportunistic. So the, the term opportunistic, and you, you also notice things that are easy to discover. The idea here was that if you're going to be putting all of your applications through level one at a minimum, you want to make sure that you're looking for the types of things that are actually happening in the industry. Um, and, and also the types of things that are um, lower barrier to testing. You know, if, if level one was going to take you 10 days per app, you probably would never get through every one of your applications. So the spread had to also be there. You know, we had to make sure that level one wasn't too heavy so, so that it would be adopted. Um, in this presentation, I'm not going to get through the, I'm not going to go through the exact requirements lists, um, but those are part of the standard. And you can actually grab the standard. I'll, I'll, I'll um, put a, there's a link of, of it over here as well as in the presentation. Level two, um, this is what most applications strive for. So if, if you were to get past level one and want to make sure that your applications are up to par, um, level two, for example, will contain the OWASP top 10 until um, Dave recently threw a curveball at us and included the third party controls. And I'll explain, I'll explain why that's slightly different. But um, there's still room for changes here. But mostly OWASP top 10, um, these are the things that if you were going to do a pen test of an app, you probably would want to cover. Um, but again, you don't have unlimited time. You need to prioritize somehow. So most applications would strive for this. I'll explain what the, the plus means in a little bit. Um, in the diagram, we've tried to demonstrate that this is a platform versus a step. So this is where you kind of want to hit as, as an application. And then we have our third and final level, which is the advanced level. So this one is slightly different from the other levels in that there are really two types of checks. One is your standard requirements. Um, so these are the things that you test for, the verification requirements. Um, and then we have these other principles of good security design. Um, so the apps that you might want to put through level three are are the ones that are mission critical or you know what you consider your top tier applications. Um, so we've defined the requirements that are much more stringent and we also check for principles of good design. Just to give you an example of what some of those good design principles are, um, if you're doing input validation, make sure that it's um, actually ve verified that it's whitelist and not blacklist. So you may be required to actually analyze the code at this point, although we're not saying that of how you actually manage that. Um, do not do just input validation, also do parameterization and output encoding. Um, make sure that authorization is centralized, it's not patchwork all over the app. So you're verifying all these things already, but now you're making sure that the application is sound from a design perspective as well. While not really getting into how you va validate that, most, most likely it will require threat modeling, code review, um, other than runtime analysis. Any questions? All good? Okay, 10 minutes. So the plus. Um, one thing we did notice in the previous ASVS was that we had requirements, but we had this concept of scope as well that was embedded in the requirements. Um, so for example, level one, um, you could test only the custom code that you wrote, whereas level two introduced this concept of third-party frameworks and libraries. Um, what we've done is we've separated the scope from the requirements, so now you can actually certify an application for either L3, 
or L3 plus. What that means is that level three, you, you reviewed all of the level three requirements for the code that you build or the code that's custom to this app. Um, L3 plus, if you choose to do that, it's, it's an even more stringent level or certification and that you now reviewed all of the frameworks that are included, um, as well as any third-party libraries that you use. So this is where I was saying, I think the new A9 in the OWASP top 10 um, kind of gets rolled into a plus here um, for this version of ASVS. Any thoughts on that one? Does that make sense? Right, right. Yeah, they're not a perfect mapping. You're right. We're not saying check for known vulnerabilities. Um, we're saying these specific requirements that you already validated also extend those to the third-party libraries and frameworks, if applicable. Um, the detailed verification requirements, again, I won't get into the details here, but um, you know, very similar to the previous standard. So what, what you end up with is these um, types of requirements categorized um, into 11 categories um, that you then, uh, the standard will tell you whether, for example, authentication v1.1 um, has to be covered in 1, 2, or 3. So this is how you actually go forward with validation of an application against ASVS levels. Um, what has changed here in the requirements, if, if you were familiar with the old one, is um, some of the internal controls um, have been rolled into others, and some of them have been removed completely. Um, we've introduced business logic as well as mobile, which I guess you don't see it's being cut off over here. But we do have now mobile um, security requirements. So if you have a mobile application, you, have, you need to go through everything, but also go through, go through the very specific mobile ones. We felt that was um, something that was definitely required. Um, you know, the old requirements were a little out of date, um, so we updated those quite a bit as well. A lot of clarification, a lot of time went into making sure the requirements are clear, um, which was, again, one of the more common feedbacks that we got um, from the old version. Um, other than that, I think, um, so security architecture is also not there. Again, it's been rolled into some of the other ones. Um, it's not specifically called out. and we merged input validation and output encoding. Um, so now that is referring to both, really. So what's next? Um, if you're interested, you can grab um, the beta version here. It's actually linked from the original uh, OWASP page as well. You can go to the downloads and get beta version. Um, again, it's open for feedback until October. Um, and then we're going to basically finalize it at that point. Um, don't worry about this. Um, I'll send you guys the slides and you can grab it. Some things we're looking forward to doing. Um, this is its something I wanted to include in this version, but one thing I feel is that a lot of the OWASP projects, they need to um, collaborate more. So we have these really good testing guide and, and developer guide that have the checklist of things to test for. Um, we also define a lot of those here in ASVS. Um, so one of the things we're looking at possibly as a next version is um, perhaps to remove some of the detailed requirements and map instead to other standards. I um, haven't necessarily settled on that yet, but I want to hear your feedback. If you guys have any thoughts on that, um, please let me know. So it would reference other standards, and instead it would just give you the um, mapping of what needs to be covered for V1 or V2, or um, sorry, L1, L2, or L3. And because ASVS is trying to cater to both organizations and pen testers, perhaps kind of a view for both, just um, it, the content will be the same, but just a different way to present it to different audiences. A um, couple of things we're looking at. Um, really quick shout outs to some of the major contributors to this release, as well as ASVS 2009, because you'll find a lot of the requirements are still the same. A lot of work went into that previous version. So um, thank you to everybody on this slide. And please email me with questions. And um, join the mailing list as well if you're interested in this topic. Definitely looking for more feedback. The more, the better. Um, so thank you.
Thanks a lot. Are there any questions? Are you just trying to get me back for... <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, do you have a, any kind of like diff kind of description that says, hey, here's what the old requirements were, here's what the new ones were, these are the ones that fell off or got merged or whatever? I mean, if you don't, it might be useful yeah. to have that, particularly for the few adopters of the original one. But I mean, also, I think to sort of see how it evolved, I don't know how hard that would be to produce. Yeah, we we have them tracked in different ways, but it hasn't been kind of rolled up into something presentable. Yeah, but, I mean, it um, wouldn't even yeah. need to be in the document. It could be a, a, a companion document sure. for those that care about that. But that yeah. I think that would be useful. Yeah, I, I agree, and we'll definitely do that. Thanks. Um, thank you for the presentation. Um, there is, I see two parts in the ASVS, um, sorry, uh, ASVS, yes. Mm -hmm. The first one is the framework itself, how to rank yourself, how to make sure you are like aligned with the s standard. And the second part was for me, the requirements. Right. And you talked about the framework, how it was updated, but I'm missing a little bit some information about how did you maybe update the requirements what what's the process or the methodology to actually update the requirements because the, sure. the current one are from 2009 yeah so right yeah um i can i can talk to that a little bit so if we look at the definition of the different levels they change quite a bit from the definition of the previous levels and um, the reason why i'm going back to the levels is that by defining what a level means, so opportunistic are things that it, we, we talked about being prevalent but also easy to discover. So what we did was we went through the requirements and we remapped it to the new terminology. So previously level one was things that can be caught with automated scanning, for example. Level two was things that um, you catch with further manual verification. Yep, go ahead. Okay. Just updates in general and new meth and new requirements. Sure. Um, the biggest ones I would say that were added or updated was the mobile and the um, business logic ones. Um, the other ones were updated quite a bit based on feedback that we had received from the list. You know, people that over the years had responded with, hey, this one doesn't make sense, or this one is irrelevant now, or maybe add this or add that, as well as it went through um, a round of reviews with, um, with a group of individuals that went through it. So that, that was really our mechanism for updating the requirements. Yep. Any other questions? Ah, there are other people as well. No questions? No? Okay. <laughs> well, then, Saba, thanks again. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Now you guys have some time.